In this experiment, we're making potassium ferry oxalate, a deep green, light-sensitive iron complex used in photochemistry and actinometry. For this synthesis, we need potassium hydroxide, oxalic acid, distilled water, hydrogen peroxide, and ferrous sulfate. This flask is my source of iron. A ferrous sulfate solution I made over a year ago by dissolving steel wool in sodium bisulfate. It's been sitting in this glass flask all this time, and it got quite oxidized. To use it, I decided to fully oxidize it to iron 3, using few drops of 30% hydrogen peroxide. This step was done in a well-ventilated area, since hydrogen peroxide can release fine aerosols and irritating mist when it decomposes. After oxidation, we test the pH of the iron 3 sulfate solution, and it was highly acidic. To neutralize it and precipitate the iron hydroxide, we prepare a solution of potassium hydroxide in water by dissolving around 10 grams of potassium hydroxide into 100 milliliters of distilled water. I start by adding a small amount of the iron 3 sulfate to the potassium hydroxide solution. A brown solid of iron 3 hydroxide formed immediately, turning the solution murky. But the precipitate was extremely thick, so to make sure everything reacted properly, I switched on the magnetic stir. I stopped the addition once the solution hit around pH 7, right where iron 3 hydroxide fully precipitates. The filtration was a disaster. The iron 3 hydroxide was too thick, it completely clogged the filter. Even with vacuum filtration, it took over 3 hours to finish. After filtration, I carefully scooped the thick iron 3 hydroxide sludge and transferred it onto a petri dish for the next step. Next, I prepared a solution with 10 grams of potassium hydroxide and 25 grams of oxalic acid to maintain an acidic environment. That's important to keep the iron 3 soluble as a complex. The potassium hydroxide reacts with the oxalic acid, forming potassium oxalate in situ, while the excess acid keeps the solution acidic. In this acidic environment, the iron 3 hydroxide reacts with the oxalic acid to form ferric oxalate, which gradually turns into potassium ferric oxalate. The brown color fades and is replaced by a deep green as the complex forms. I filter the solution and gently boil it on a hot plate down from 250 milliliters to about 100. Then I place the beaker into a plastic tray filled with ice water to cool it slowly. Beautiful green crystals of potassium ferrioxalate began to appear. And once the crystals had fully formed, I carefully decanted the remaining solution, leaving the crystals behind then dried them gently using filter paper and transferred them into a vial for storage. The final yield was around 11 grams of pure dark green potassium ferrioxalate trihydrate.